All right, today we're going to restore um, KEF 104 Series 2. All right, we've got it set on its side so we can access the bottom hatch. And we've got screws around the perimeter, so we get started by removing these screws. All right, so we've got all the screws out of the hatch. And we're going to pull this bottom off. There we go. That's kind of short wired, so it's not a lot of slack here in the wiring harness. Put something under here. There we go. Okay, as you can see, the crossover's mounted right here on this bottom hatch, which is really cool because you have total access to it. Once we disconnect the wiring harness, you can unscrew these mounts here and you can lift this crossover board up and have access to recap it. You've got about 16 electrolytic caps here. Well, this speaker is old enough that all these caps need to be replaced. Uh, it's not absolutely necessary at these points. Mo these are high quality caps and even though they're electrolytics most of them are probably still going to be within tolerance. Uh, the other thing I would say about this if you do decide to replace them replace them with high quality electrolytics. Don't go to the film and foils like a lot of people are going to tell you on the internet. They're going to say oh you need to put these exotic capacitors in here. It'll make it sound a lot better it will make it sound different. Now if you want a KEF 104 because of the way they sound replace the electrolytics with electrolytics. If you want it to sound like something else well then uh, maybe you want to put some kind of exotic uh, film and foil capacitors in here. I guess that's uh, that's up to you. I don't recommend it. Uh, but let's get into the what we've got to do here. We've got two eight inch woofers and what we're going to do first is disconnect this crossover and get it out of the way. You can see these are all spade type connectors and they're labeled here, they're color coded but to make it easier later on, like on this multi-wire here, you're okay with the color codes but over here you want to get your colored markers out like this is great for color codes so we use our colored markers and we'll color code it before we disconnect it so when we go to put it back together we won't have to spend a lot of time figuring out what goes where okay so we got our color coded wiring harness loose and you can see we've done some of our uh, some additional color coding here ourselves. We'll set that crossover out of the way. Now take a look up in here. There, here's our bottom woofer. And actually, well, we'll just quickly uh, we'll just mark this to make sure we remember where it goes. This is the bottom, so I'll just put a B on that for bottom. Uh, whenever you're doing a restoration, you take things apart, either document it with photographs or at the very least make sure you remember where everything goes because sometimes especially if you get delayed you go to put it back together you might not remember all the details and it might take you quite a bit longer to figure out how to do what you've got to do now before I remove the woofer what I'm going to do is take this foam damping material out of here Now take a look inside there. You can see it's a teardrop triangular shape type frame on the 8 inch woofer and it's got three mounting studs with nuts on them. Um, and Kef has a, an isolation system. As a little, there's a little rubber grommet on the frame to keep the frame isolated from the, uh, from the cabinet. And notice the bolt all right, now let me show you what the, where this bolt's going. Come around the corner and look in. You can see into the port here, and you see that aluminum rod. Now there's another eight-inch woofer up in here, and that 
aluminum rod connects them together. So we're going to have to pull the three screws, the three nuts here, and then this nut in the center. We're going to have to take that loose too so we can remove this woofer. I'll get that taken loose and I'll show you what it looks like. Alright, this is what I'm going to use a little ratchet with an extension. Uh, as soon as the nut breaks loose, no, no point in you know having the ratchet in there because it's kind of awkward. So just take the ratchet off and just bring it off by hand. Alright, bring it off by hand now. So something I want to show you here. When I, I broke this one loose, the last one, when I broke it loose, with a couple of turns it didn't free up. It's not hand free right now. I still have to have the leverage of the ratchet. What that means is this nut, when it was put on here originally, is this was cross threaded. Somebody ran this thing on with a gun, and they didn't get the thread set right, and now it's cross threaded. Otherwise it would have came loose with a half a turn or so and I could have brought it off by hand as it is I still got tension I got tension on the ratchet all the way off and what that means is it's cross threaded so what that means to us is that we're going to mark this nut and we're going to make sure we put this nut back on this stud because we don't want to cross thread we don't want to do any more cross threading in here Alright, I told you this nut was cross threaded and I turned on it for a while and I never got it loose and so I realized that uh, the nut was not cross threaded, the, sh the, the shaft was turning the uh, captured bolt here that comes through the, the baffle it was spinning so what I've had to do is I've reached my hand I've reached my hand with my screwdriver in through the port and I've got on the top of this captured stud to hold it from spinning so I could get that loose. There we go. So once again look here, if if you if you go to remove this woofer and the nut won't break loose, you've got the whole shaft turning. You have to come in here, and it's difficult to do because you don't have any room to work. And you have to come in here and get this Phillips screwdriver on the top of the shaft to keep it from spinning. So, oftentimes when you're doing these restorations, you're going to have to deal with issues like that. Things are going to, uh, you know, you're going to have unexpected problems. Luckily, the top was exposed and we could reach in through the port and capture that stud and get the nut off if we couldn't have been able to do that if, if we wouldn't have been able to get in through this port or if the top was blank like some of these uh, fang nails if they want to call them that threaded fang nails um, if it's spinning well then you've got a serious problem about the only chance you have there if that happens is you got to get a little open-ended wrench here on the nut and then get like some channel locks or something to grab the shaft to where you can break the nut loose but you have to be careful that you don't destroy all the threads on that on that threaded stud so like I say sometimes when you're doing these restorations you can get into really difficult situations where they're not cooperating another thing to watch that makes these kefs a pain to work on these these holes routed out here uh, on this uh, MDF they make really sharp edges you can't get out of a KEF 104 because of all the tight spaces you got to work in and the sharp edges you can't get out of it without losing a little skin you know that's just part of it alright um, another recommended practice here get yourself a cup or a tray keep all your parts together you don't want to scatter parts around the room you have to go looking for them when you're trying to put this thing back together so always have yourself a little tray or a cup something to put all your nuts and bolts in now we've got this center rod right here and uh, this is a 10 millimeter all right all 
Right now, if this spins on you, you have to reach in through the port and just grab a hold of that rod and steady that rod so that you can get this bolt here out. Alright, see that? So now we should be able to come on out with this. And there it is. Let's set it over here and take a look at what we've got. All right, the un unusual aspect about this is the foam donut gasket here in the center where that aluminum rod goes through. So we don't have a conventional dust cap. So we've got foam rot, which we see on so many of these speakers. But we don't just have the foam rot on the edge. We've got the foam rot here, too. And you can find these readily online. We've got the right little foam replacement part to complete this repair. I'm not going to strip this out of here until I get all this cleaned up because I don't want this stuff to go down in the gap. And I'll show you that when we get to it. If, if you've seen any of my other videos, you've seen me uh, remove foam before on various speakers. And I use different kind of utility knives, uh, various um, tools, and like I say, different kinds of blades. Sometimes I intentionally dull down the blades or reshape the blades. Everyone's a little bit different you know, where you start and and how you go about the final um, step to get this cone and frame ready to accept the new suspension. If you don't get this stuff off of here and you don't get it clean right down to the base materials then your new suspension is not going to stick on there and you're going to have trouble. Well, sometimes you've seen me do this before. You know I have uh, well, let's, uh, ahead of myself here let me these wires are just going to be in my way so we're marked positive and reds on positive so that's a good thing probably be able to figure out how to get that back in the right place Move those. all right so sometimes you've seen me use the back side of the knife sometimes the front side of the knife uh, on this, I'm going to go around and just take the excess off the outer edge first, just to get it out of my way. These cones are real thin and real delicate, and you don't want to damage this cone. So everything you do with this cone, you want to get some fingers in under it and support the cone when you go to remove the foam. This one, I found the best way to get started on these is to use the actual tip. It's, it's dulled down. It's intentionally dulled down. But I'm going to use the tip. I'm going to come all the way around. Notice how that leading edge comes right up and then the rest of it is more. Oh, it's, uh, the glue has more or less liquefied this. You see, sometimes this foam, uh, it, it just comes off basically like a dry powder. It's just real powdery and just crumbles away. But other times, it's like this. It turns into a goo. It says, turns into a sticky goo, and it will make a mess of everything. So I'm going to come all the way around like this first, just to get most of it up off there. And then, when I get that done all the way around, I'm going to lift up on the cone, and I'm going to come back with the leading edge. You see how it's lifting the, the gooey stuff up off? That's what you want to do. You want to get it lifted up off and not mash it down into there and make a big sticky, ugly mess. See if I smash that right there, it, it would just stain and streak. Well, you know, I guess it really doesn't matter in the long run, but we like to make them look good too and not just, you know, function right. And then on the edge, I'm gonna first I'm gonna come around the leading edge. And there again, we have to be careful on this one that we don't get stuff down in the magnetic gap. <coughs> this is a metal frame, uh, ferrous metal. So if you cut hard, scrape hard with the knife, and you get metal shavings down this gap, you're going to have problems. 
so don't scrape metal off this just go easy take the foam off but try not to shave the metal at all you don't want to get metal shavings down in that gap alright when I go around there and take it off the inside then I'm going to lay the knife flat and I'm going to come around this way there again I'm trying to lift the material up with the edge of the blade now a couple of things you want to be aware of here if you're coming along here and your knife slips you got a lot of downforce here and your knife slips right down on the cone damage the cone be careful don't let your knife slip off the frame and damage the cone so the other thing you might notice I'm doing instead of my hand being up here freehand I'm laying the heel of my hand over here on the frame to give me support and guidance and help help make sure I don't slip off here and damage the cone all right so I'm going to come all the way around like that and I'm going to take the foam off the cone and the frame and then I'll show you how to get to that donut okay we've gone on around with our knife and removed all the old material that we could and then we come back to our wire brush here our metal wire brush stainless steel so bristles aren't ferrous they won't uh, go down in the magnetic field if they break off so we go around and we've cleaned up the frame and now once again on this cap it's a delicate paper cone so anything you do to it support it get your fingers in under it make sure you don't bend or stress the cone so I come lightly right around the path right where that suspension was all the way around we take that down to the paper the final step we use the brush all right now we have to deal with this donut the problem with this is this exposes the gap all this stuff is going right down in the magnetic gap that whatever I don't get off here get a hold of it's almost impossible to get a hold of all of it so some of it's going to go down in that gap um, you have this standoff here that the, the um, gasket attaches to I'm going to carefully remove the remainder of the glue and the foam there. Let me get that off there. Notice I use a turntable. If you've seen my other videos, this turntable is a, when you're doing this kind of work, it really makes it a lot easier. Right, so you want to constantly get that stuff out of there no matter how hard you try some of it's going to go down in there now a lot of times if you've seen other people's videos of replacing the foam you might see they use solvents to take this down I, I don't like to use solvents I hardly ever do it because it makes a mess it makes a gooey sticky mess out of everything and it can damage paper cones in this case because of the type of glue they use here and where this is at this is almost impossible just to scrape all this off you have to put so much pressure on it, it takes a chance of damage of the cone and so and anyway in this case this is one of the rare cases where I am going to use a solvent I'm going to use just regular isopropyl alcohol and a little cotton swab I'm just going to get it right where we need it once again notice how this turntable makes all this so much easier I can just spin that thing around just like that and just put that whatever I want to do whether I'm scraping or whether I'm adding a solvent or a glue bead I can just get that right on there alright so we'll just let that set on there for a few minutes and let that solvent do its work and then we'll get in here with our you know I don't know what kind of knives or tools you have around but I've got different blades cut for different apps so and once again I'm gonna get my fingers in under here I'm gonna support my work remember you can't damage the form and the voice coil in the gap you know you can't put pressure on it and buckle the cone or you know do any damage to the spider so so once that solvent starts to do its work you might actually and you can feel when you have your finger and under there you can feel if you're putting too much pressure on the cone 
you can actually feel the blade through the cone but this is so thick and this is so important we get this off here so that because if that if you put that new gasket on there and it's not glued down tight all the way around it'll it'll cause you problems it'll buzz on at certain frequencies so anyway this is so thick and, and tough here that what I'm going to do is go all the way around and, and break into it and then I'm just going to come back with more solvent, more alcohol here. I'm going to do that a couple of times until we get all that off there. And then when I get all that off there, we'll come back and show you how to proceed. Alright, we've scraped all the foam off best we could and uh, when you're doing these KF 104s, you, you can't get all this off. Don't try to get it all off. You'll damage the cone. Get it as good as you can, but and try not to get anything down in the gap. Now, turn the speaker on its side or sideways. Take your canned air. Make sure any foam that fell down in that gap is out of there because that foam will get gooey down in there and it'll jam it up and make it where it doesn't run smoothly. Make sure you're running freely in the gap. And take a magnifier and go all the way around and look down in there really carefully with a bright light and a magnifier. And make sure there's nothing down in there. Alright, now we have to center this up. And what we're going to do is use some plastic shims here. These aren't very thick. But it's a really tight gap. And you have this piece here in your way so you have to kind of work it to make it get down in the gap and put a little curve to it and work it back and forth until you get it to go down in the gap it's, it's easier if you use three or four smaller ones than if you try to use you can't just you won't be able to use one piece but sometimes you could do just two but three seems to work really good so all right, so we've got it shimmed in the gap so that we're centered. Now, if you're not sure, well, let's take it. Let's go ahead and take another look in here now that we got the woofer. We didn't show you what it looks like in there with the woofer out. But you can see you've got this aluminum rod that connects to the other woofer. So when you go back in with this thing, you have to put it back together in reverse order. You, you would never, if you put this bottom woofer in first and then try to put the top woofer in and connect with that rod, you'll never be able to do it. So, what we're going to do is, we showed you, we've taken out the bottom woofer, then we're going we're gonna to take the top woofer out. But when we go to put it back together, we've got to go in reverse order. We put the top woofer in first, then the connecting rod, then the bottom woofer, and then the final bolt. So you have to work in reverse order. All right, now, if you haven't done this before, you should have, of course, but before you put any glue on, you know, make sure that you've got the right size here. You've got the angle attached, you've got the right size flanges, and that it fits like it should. If you'll notice, I put my finger here to mark, and when I lift it up, it's right right there, right where the, the other glue bead is. So that's that's what you want. That's a good fit. So now that we've got a good fit, we flip it over like this. Uh, usually we use a, um, a yellow rubber type cement like a Bostage 100 or a similar type adhesive. This is a, a CRC product. That's a little bit different, but it sets up a little quicker. And so I'm going to go around here and I'm going to do, I could just do this just on the cone just one side and then drop the foam on and that you know that would work but I'm gonna put it on the foam first and you see it's drying really quickly here on the foam so I'm gonna use this more like a contact cement I'm gonna put it on both surfaces because you get a quicker tack you get a better hold that way now the one downside about doing it on both surfaces it's, it's gonna stick really quick so you gotta be good you got to get it where you want it really quickly. So there again, we're going to all the way around this edge here. And of course, it's more important that it sticks than that it's pretty. But 
we want it to be pretty too. Alright, you need to work fairly quickly because this is pretty quick dry and tacking glue here. So get it right where you want it, right from the start. Alright, I'm going to look here, here, here. See, I'm a little bit further out here, so I want to get that, I want to get that space the same. See, I'm a little bit, so I centered up. Now, see, you can see it's already starting to tack up, so i got to be quick here and get it right where I want it. Now it's starting to tack. All right, now I'm going to use just my finger here. You see, I, my index finger, I'm pushing it down, but my uh, middle finger here, I'm using it to kind of push it down toward the cone. So I, I've got control over it both ways because, I, you know, this is going to tack up quick, and I want it to be right where I need it. All right, now, after I get it tacked and I'm sure that I've got it equal distance everywhere, I'll start using, I'm going to, this right here, I'm just going to use these tweezers. And I'm going to use this in because it's round and flat, and so it won't dig in here, and I'm going to use that to help me press that down. It'll go all the way around. You could use any, you could use any kind of little tool, but this one seems to be handy. It's like a lot of these tools I use is stainless steel, so I don't have to worry about it sticking all these speaker magnets all the time. And, you know, here's a just a brush with a plastic handle. That works pretty good. Alright, we'll go around till that. And I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it there. Again, I don't want to damage the cone. So after that tax. Now, I'm going to come back and lay this bead under here. I'm going to lift it up. You might ask me, well, why didn't you lay a bead down there and here at the same time and then drop it down on there? You try that, but you, you can get in trouble that way because you're working this inner edge and, all, and the outer edge is not quite where you want it and it's already tacking up. Or the glue's getting out, you're getting glue on your fingers and you're getting glue all over things. So I, I do the inside first and with, a, with, the, with the frame dry and then I come back let me get my light right here where I can see, but I'm going to lift it up, and then I'm going to come around here and lay the bead. And you got to watch it. you got to watch what you're doing because you don't want any gaps here in this bead. Okay, when I get this laid down, I'm going to lay it down the same way I did on the inside. I'm going to put even pressure on it and work all the way around until I get it glued down. We'll show you that when we get there. Alright, so we get the glue bead all the way around. We've worked it all the way around. I'm just using this little brush here at the end of it. So we work it all the way around like this. Let me make sure that it's stuck good all the way around. And then we're going to put our, our little donut in. So, we're going to take our centering shims out. We're going to evenly move this thing in and out to make sure we're centered and we're not rubbing. Feels really good. Nothing got down in that gap. None of the old foam got down in there and caused any problems. So, that's good. So, we come back around. Center that out. Lay our glue bead in here. There again, we want we want to do pretty work. We don't want to have a lot of glue all over the place, but it's important that this piece stay down. So make sure you get. And now we got to get off here. And when we get out of here, just make sure you don't have any glue run down the side of this post and go down to that gap. You're going to have big big problems if you got glue running down into your magnetic gap. So be careful you don't use too much glue here. Be careful none of it drips down into the magnetic gap. Alright, so we'll lay this on the post. 
Here again here a little tool come in real handy. You gotta get that down into that glue. You gotta make sure you're centered right on that post. Use the the inside for a guide. Alright now you see it, it's not touching the cone, so I'm gonna have to raise the cone up. And I'm gonna I gotta do it evenly and raise it up to where we have contact without lifting this off. Alright, and then I work this down into my glue bead. I've seen some people that they try to stick paper towels or Kleenex down in here between the cone and the frame to hold this cone up while they do this. I wouldn't recommend that because it's, it would be easy to get the voice coil off center in the gap if you didn't get it centered when you when you did that. So I, I do it by hand. That way I can I can feel it as I'm doing it. I can feel whether I'm moving the the voice coil out of alignment. And in fact, I'll I'll come around here and take a half a turn and get over here and lift it up from the other side once again that just to make sure I'm not getting off center got a tight gap here and it's real easy to have a voice coil rub anytime you're doing a foam replacement you could have a voice coil rub and a lot of these do-it-yourself kits say oh don't worry about cutting the dust cap don't worry about shimming the voice coil you, you don't have to do that well, don't believe it. I've seen plenty of speakers that do-it-yourselfers have got it, the voice coil misaligned. And when you do that, it's either impossible or very difficult to get the voice coil realigned properly. There's a company that claims that they're the experts at doing kefs up in the uh, Atlantic Coast area, and I'm not going to name the company, but uh, I have seen some really sloppy work come out of that shop. Now, another reason I'm using this CRC type glue here is instead of the the rubber cement I usually use is because it's it's pretty aggressive in its tack characteristic and it's, and it's got a real short open time so just about the right glue for okay so that's that's basically how we do that and uh, we're, what we're going to show you next is how you get into this kef and remove that top woofer. Removing the bottom woofer wasn't too difficult, but uh, you'll see the degree of difficulty is going to go up now in uh, removal of this uh, upper woofer. All right, here we are. Our refoamed kef 104 series 2 woofer. New foam edge. New foam donut moving freely in the gap. Looks good. Now we're going to show you how to get to the top one. Yeah, we're going to show you how to take the top woofer out. What we've got to do is remove this high mid pack. Four bolts holding on. The wiring harness in here, it's labeled, but uh, I might want to. I'll add a couple of my own marks to it just so I don't have to actually look at it and read the labels. It's, um, it's pretty straightforward, but. You know, Kef makes a fine product. Um, this is a really nice sounding speaker. A lot of people really like them. I don't want to get any British people mad at me, but 
This is a typical example of British engineering. Sometimes when you look at what they do and how they do it, you wonder, you know, what they're thinking. But, uh, you know, maybe that's why we revolted from them in the first place. Well, look here. See, they, they give you a wiring diagram here. Lead wire, green, upper mid-range. So you have lower mid-range, upper mid-range. All right, so blue and brown, no problem. There's only a blue and a brown. You can see that, but there's two sets of green and yellow, so I'm just going to make my own marks here. I'll, uh, just so, so when I put it back together, I, I don't have to go look at it and say which one went where. I'll just make this one. Red on that one. I'll do black on this one. That way, when we go back on, I can just look right at it and just and not have to look at this and figure out what I did. So, and look how they do the tweeter mount. This is what I'm talking about. This is one of the things I'm talking about when I talk about British engineering. <clears throat> Sorry, British engineers, I don't mean to <clears throat> insult you, but. Look how, they, look how they mount the tweeter. They have a wood block sliding in this dado groove, and then they have a screw with a, a T nut or a fang nut in here, and the screw simply puts pressure against the back of the tweeter magnet. So always make sure that's, you don't want to make that real tight, but make sure that it's not loose. Same way with these two screws, as long as you're in here, just go ahead and make sure these screws are tight. Anytime you're doing a restoration and you're backing out of it or when you're getting into it, if you see some screws, bolts, nuts, whatever, you know, put a wrench, put a screwdriver on them, make sure that they're torqued right. <clears throat> Remember, these things vibrate. That's what speakers do. That's what they're supposed to do. They vibrate. And what's vibration do? Vibration shakes things loose. So, you always want to look into that kind of thing. All right, now, <clears throat> foam just like we showed you, uh, damping foam in the bottom. They have the same thing in the top. You have a piece of open cell foam that wraps all the way around and then you have some polyfill in there with it. Get rid of that. Now, there's your top woofer. You see, this one's a little bit harder to get to. This one, you're going to lose a little skin on. Uh, once again, when they router these, this MDF out, it gets, these edges are very, very sharp. And you know, this MDF has chemicals in it formaldehyde and whatever and you're gonna get scraped and you're gonna lose some skin on this <clears throat> but basically we've got the same setup here we've got three bolts on these uh, studs here these fang studs if you want to call them that they're not supposed to turn but like we saw on the bottom one, one out of three turned. I had to get a screwdriver on the other side of it. Same thing here. But it's a lot harder to get to here if you have to do that here. It's going to be, you're going to have a lot more difficulty there. So we're going to take our ratchet and since I still have the 10 millimeter on, it's the last one I use. For taking that bolt out of the bottom one I'm just gonna take that bolt out first so I got to go in through that center cut out that donut instead of a regular dust cap now you got to reach in here and grab this rod and you can either spin the rod or you can just spin your ratchet whichever way but we got to remove this rod so we can get the woofer out of here all right so there's the rod and sit it down the same way that it came out so what was the top before will be the top again it, it, you can probably switch it around no problem, but we like to put everything back just exactly like it was. So, take that bolt out. Now, that bolt will just stay with the speaker because the magnets hold it in there. We'll pull it, after we pull the whole speaker out, we'll take that bolt out of the way. And we go back in with our ratchet, and once again, we've got three nuts to take loose. When I get these loose, we'll come back and show you what happens when we pull it out. Alright, this top set, 
it has two nuts as a secondary locking nut. Like I say, you're gonna probably gonna lose a little skin on this deal. There's not much room to work here, and so I curse you, Kef engineer, whichever mechanical engineer at Kef was responsible for this silly design. All right, now I've got the woofer loose, and I, I take a look. I've got, I've got resistance here. What's the resistance? The resistance is the wiring harness here. Now, you don't want to damage the terminals on the speaker, so you want to. You got to pull these wires. Go back to the other end and show them how the wiring harness, as it comes up through here, has that bit of silicone there. You see how that the orange and the gray wires. See, I'm pulling on them now to give me slack to get this woofer up out of here. And it's, it's resistant because it's got that little piece of silicone, but just be patient, don't pull on them too hard, but pull on them enough, get enough slack where you can, all right, here we go, we got enough slack, we the woofer out. So the woofer comes out right through this slot, and you just have just enough room to get it out. I've got just enough slack pull on these wires. Now, when we go back in, uh, what we'll do, you know, we have to slack these wires. We'll, 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 uh, when we solder these wires back on, as we drop the woofer into place, and this is easier if you have somebody to help you, but you can do it alone if you reach down through here and get a hold of the orange and the gray wire. And as you reinstall this, you have to pull the slack back as you drop it in and get it in place. So that's kind of an awkward operation. Uh, like I said, it's easier with two people. You can do it by yourself if you're patient enough. Alright. Alright, now, and here's the bolt. Right? So, we've already showed you how to refoam this. This one's done. Rinse, repeat, and go again right so we'll do the same thing to this one that we did to this one and when we get done and what we've got to do is put it back together and when we put it back together reverse order so we'll have to put the top one in first pull the slack back on the wiring harness get the top mounted and bolted in and then you can look through the other end and make sure you've got the right amount of slack pulled through the wiring harness. Then reattach the aluminum rod, reinstall the lower woofer. So uh, when we get this done, we'll come back and show you some of, of, of that. and it, You'll see it's pretty self-explanatory. Okay. All right, to, to get the woofer out, we had to pull the slack out of the... Uh, this orange and gray wire here and now as we go back in as we mount the woofer we have to pull the slack back to the bottom of the cabinet as we go so it's easier if you have two people to do this but you can do it by yourself drop the woofer in and then reach in through the port here and grab the gray and the orange wire and start pulling the slack out right here you can see down in here Take the shot right here where I'm putting the woofer in. Take the shot down in here and see the slack in the wire. All right, we have to take that slack back the other direction before we can get the woofer mounted. There we go. It's starting to move out. Okay. Or at least get enough slack out to where we don't capture the wire between the frame and the. baffle here. This isn't an easy thing to do. It takes a little bit of patience. You have to work through this tiny cutout and you can't really see what you're what you're doing. You have to just go by feel. And of course you be careful we don't poke a hole in that new suspension we put on there. As you 
could say that might be counterproductive. Okay, let's take a look in through the bottom hatch now. Take a look and if you can look up in there and make sure that the wires, the orange and gray wire is not captured between the baffle and the frame. It feels like we're setting flush, but it also could tighten up. Let me pull some of that wire back. You can see up in there. You can see if the how much slack there is in the wire on the driver. Can you see the back of the driver? Yeah. Is there enough? Can you pull some more slack out of that orange and gray wire, or is it good? Uh, yeah, they're 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 pretty good. They they're like they're like twirled around each other right now. And they're pretty tight. Yeah, they're 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 out of the way. Okay, let me see if I can seat this and the thread these nuts on the post here. All right. When we get these nuts on here and get them tightened down, we'll uh, show you the rest of it. All right, we've got the the top woofer installed and before we put the damping material back into place we have to reconnect our aluminum rod here that ties the two woofers together with this bolt right here and it goes right in the uh, center of the pole piece of the woofer so I'm going to reach in there and I'm going to put the bolt in and of course the magnet's going to pull it on in there so what you do is, let me come around this way, I'm gonna get some pressure against that bolt, start threading this rod on from the other side here. Tighten that a little bit. Ten millimeter socket. Okay, one other note about remounting these woofers. Now you can see down in here now we've got our don't want to leave that socket in there. We've got our rod reconnected. But, uh, look at the detail on woofer. They they have Kef has these shock mount, these standoff rubber grommets. So when you torque the nut down that holds this in place, you don't want to completely flatten out that grommet. I couldn't tell you uh, how much torque exactly to put on there, but you can feel when it starts tightening down and compressing the rubber, and you just want it nice and snug. But you don't want to over tighten this and flatten out that rubber grommet because then you'll be the metal will be in contact with the baffle and Kef was trying to avoid that. I'm not really sure how much good that does but we always try to put them back like they were. So now the, the last thing we have to do here on the top we've got three bolts tight we've got the bolt on the connecting rod tight so we've got to put our damping material back in here Polyfill to go in there with it. Goes around all four sides. There's that. All right, now we're gonna let's let's spin this around here. This around here where we can see. I take a shot down in here. And look, you can see the connecting rod. And then take a shot in through the bottom hatch. You can see. Now you see the connecting rod all the way up to the woofer. So just kind of eyeball this. If this is not uh, appears to be not in the center, then just kind of bend it over till you till you got it eyeballed basically in the center. That looks pretty much centered to me. You can see here the detail now. These types of these captured threaded rods that. Uh, go through the baffle. We had a problem with this one coming loose 
when we took it out so we tighten that up with a screwdriver Let's pull all the wire and harness out of the way obviously all right so when we go in we've resoldered our leads here obviously You want to be careful with your aim because you don't want to damage this, the cone, or the foam here with the rod by not being aligned and shoving it in there. So you're going to be careful that you get it lined up. Speaking of light, I could sure use a little. on your eyes is it okay there we go <coughs> now we're set all right I've got to put these washers and these nuts on <coughs> when we get that done we'll come back and show you the rest all right we got the woofer mounted if you can see that one more thing to do bolt the put the last bolt in that holds the woofers together so when you go in, you probably won't be lined up. What you got to do is reach in here through the port, grab a hold of the connecting rod, and move it around a little bit. There again, it's a feel thing. You just you can't see it. You have to feel it. But move the rod around to where you catch. I'm not getting it yet. I'm not catching it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spud this thing in. Here, I'll just use this. I'll use this all oh, a punch to spud this in where I can. All right, that's it. Yep. Sometimes it takes a while to get it to catch the thread. It, it's all all by feel so move the rod around till you get it where you need it and then get your thread caught and then drive that bolt on in all right now you can see we've got our our bottom woofer remounted and we'll uh, replace our damping foam in here and then we'll reattach the color-coded wiring harness here to the crossover network so we can replace this hatch and that will finish the bottom up well we have one more detail here on the top we've got to remount the high mid pack and one little tricky thing about this you see these four washers go here now when you take the high mid pack they come off there's no way that you can just let these set here and drop that on there. Well, you can try, but every time one of them gets knocked out of place, you have to lift it back up again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these in place. I'm not going to glue them to, you know, just a little, just a little touch of glue. I'm just going to glue these down in place so that when I put the high mid pack on, I won't have one of them shift around. Then I have to take the whole thing off again to get to it. So we're just going to put a little dab of glue on these four washers and we're going to glue them in place we'll let that dry before we drop the high mid pack back on all right we're reattaching the crossover leads you know following the color codes if you look carefully here you see red blue yellow uh, I've added some of my own color coding here just to make it easier and, and, and marked over here but what I want to show you is in, in this case, the customer has decided not to recap the thing. Now, we highly recommend that you recap a speaker that's this old. These are high-quality electrolytics. These are all caps. So, um, I can't read the capacitance while it's in the circuit, but let's use our little Atlas ESR meter here and check this 50 microfarad cap. 
Now you see it won't read the cap capacitance value in the circuit, but it reads our ESR as 0 0.08 ohms. So that's that's really good. Uh, an ESR of 0.08 ohms is what you want to see out of these these types of caps. And I've I've recapped plenty of these. Uh, when you pull these all caps, even though they're 30, 40 years old, they almost always read within their stated 10% tolerance in terms of the capacitance. And when you get an ESR of 0.08, uh, you know, it's it's a good cap. So even though I would recap this if it was mine, uh, but in this case, we'll just keep the original capacitors. All right. Crossover reinstalled, bottom hatch on. The only thing we have left to do now is uh, reinstall the high mid pack. Got it marked which side is the top. I've got my washers glued down so they don't slide and I've got the, the gasket in place. All I have to do is reattach my wiring harness here. All right, blue wire. You know, that, that feels a little loose to me. Uh, if these things are won't tighten up, you know, you could just replace these connectors. But they seem like they're all right, just a little loose. Yeah, we want that to go on good and tight like that. Brown wire. See, that's not quite as tight as I'd like it. Also, we've cleaned these with some uh, deoxid. It's good to, good to clean up all these connectors when you have the chance. Now, you see I have two sets of yellow and green. And yellow here. That's nice and tight. Green. Okay, see, I put a little red and black mark here so I wouldn't have to trace these back to where they went so here's the green without the my mark on it and that's a little loose tighten that up a little bit okay then green lower with my you see my red mark on it so I wouldn't have to trace these back and then yellow So now our high mid pack and our, our wire, like I showed you yesterday, I tighten up these screws and I tighten up the screw holding the tweeter. And anytime you have screws or bolts when you're doing a restoration, it's good to put a screwdriver or a wrench on them, make sure you're tight. And then this wiring harness is going to set up in this tweeter, this cavity here. That's why you've got to glue these washers down because if you don't, make sure those get up in there and they don't get pinched. Alright, all we have left to do is tighten this down and we'll give it a test and make sure we got everything right. Alright, we managed to get our KEF 104s restored. We've got them back together. I'm Wes, this is Texas Sam. Let's see how it goes. Alright, I think we got it. We'll see you next time.